We're live. Look, Brad seems to have turned into a dog. <laughs> Hello, fine fellow, leather lady. <laughs> what's what's this, this one's name? This is Kirby. Oh yes, yeah. Kirby, who yes. eats people's hats and gains powers. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Sweet. She's not oh, so sure got, about this. You've got two dogs, or yes, there's also a Shih Tzu who's off somewhere napping. Oh, so. that's very sweet. I, I wish I could have more than one dog, but uh, my one's quite selfish, quite grumpy, and I think he would genuinely hate that. So yeah, <laughs> it's a glorious, glorious. I'm going to hear him scratching at the door, like you talking about me. Um, hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Um. Today we have Brad Brooks with us, um, who is I'm trying to come up with a call like the co alchemist the co alchemist the brood yeah. the company that is Cardboard Alchemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you and Peter like stirring apart with wizard hats on. That's that was that's what exactly happened. That's canon, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I I I, uh, I haul in the lead and then we work together to uh, try and turn it into gold. Excellent. That's what that's, that's do. <laughs> I love it. Um, and I and I'm a, a fledgling wizard, hoping hoping to pick up <laughs> some skills on my adventure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. My little spell book and, and probably a, a cat called Kiki or something. Um, so yeah, Peter's still. He's now in Singapore with Sandara. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, which is really really cool, and I'm um, I can't wait to hear how that goes because they're meeting for the first time in person. Um, this is, you know, Cardboard Alchemy is like the prime example of remote working. <laughs> so many people have never met. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I've never actually met Peter. I, you know, huh. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> that would be incredible. Should we start a company we've never met? That, that, like, hope you're not a catfish. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Though not unheard of, I don't think. Um, but yeah, so you, you've never met Sandara, I'm guessing. Oh. I've never uh, never met Sundar in person. I have met Chris. We knew Chris ahead of time. Um, Lauren is actually in the LA area, but LA being as big as it is, we actually hardly ever see each other. Um, How big is LA in comparison to London? Do you know? Uh, Oh. <laughs> From one day, so well, I'm I'm trying to think. So it's probably so I am in the northwestmost corner of what LA City officially is. Okay. Um, it's probably forty plus miles to the opposite corner. That seems big. That seems yeah. bigger than London, probably, but I have no concept. For, everyone says London's like really easy to get around, but it can take me up to three hours to get from like you. It, it'll take from Zone Six to Zone Six or across the whole thing. It takes a while, um, but that's not a public transport. It's just time. <laughs> it's just how long yeah. it takes to get across there. If you're driving through it, even longer because that's just a bad idea. Um, but yeah, you've been to yeah, the UK. We have horrible transportation, so <laughs> public transportation, so. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Rosie, screen share and Google. I'm not Googling it. <laughs> uh, I don't want to even touch the internet right now. Seems to be working. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the first thing we always try and do with our format is talk about what we've played. And it usually is this joyful alliteration of Peter plays, but sadly it's, um, it's other Rosie plays or Brad plays, which is just not as satisfying. Um, people play. People People play. Um, but I, I, I still, I still did it. <laughs> so, what have you been playing recently? It, it can be carbon alchemy related, if if that's just the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. There was uh, there was some some testing of a future dragon game that happened this week. Very good. Very Can't good. say too much about it, other than uh, you know it was a good test. There were. Um, there were dragons going on. Uh, there were dragons in adventure. It? Oh, there were nice. dragons in the dragon game. Wow. Uh, there were some traps that they encountered. That was part of the thing that we were testing. Mm. That was fun. Um, so yeah, so that was a good thing. Um, 
Yeah, the other the other one's Whisperwood that's that's going on. Uh, it's been a little bit longer since we tested that one because we're trying to get Critter Kitchen out the door. But um, uh, yeah, Whisperwood's uh, very exciting coming up next after. Uh... <laughs> I love that you've been given like the okay, like. Yeah. Peter, don't worry, don't worry, Dad. Peter already told us some, so you can as well. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know that we've. I mean, we did a teaser uh, uh, last year and everything. I'm just yeah, being, yeah. Uh, purposely vague, um, but uh, yeah, Whisperwood's exciting. Uh, I don't know how much we've talked about the the theme behind it. We've mentioned um, that it's inspired by the art from the first ever right. Kickstarter, the Golem, or oh, is it Golem? Golem? Like it's not Golem. It's not Gollum. Let's say we don't have the rights to that. <laughs> right. It, yeah. It's it, it's not Lord of the Rings Gollum. It's a mythical Gollum. But uh, yeah, there's this. We've it was inspired by uh, Sergio's piece of art that we did on one of our first coasters, um, and then the idea that uh, several of us like bag building games. Uh, so I came up with a outline for a game that combine those together um, and then the theme behind it is that there is this forest where um, a cataclysmic battle took place between the dark sorcerer and the guardians of the forest which were these magical golems that helped to protect the forest and the golems were able to to defeat the the sorcerer but at the cost of all of their magical energy so um Unfortunately, the 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 forest as a battleground was just completely corrupted by the battle. Um, so now, much time has passed, and the players are druids who are going to reclaim the forest um, and bring it back to life. And uh, with the help of the the golems that they uh, that they awaken, it sounds um, awesome. I've not I've not played any of any of that, <laughs> so I don't know. All I know yeah. is what you've been talking about, but it kind of one of my favorite, my favorite Studio Ghibli character is the robots from Laputa Castle in the Sky. Um, they look like, I have a, my enamel pin board. They look like this mm. um, and also this. And I kind of, when I saw the art, it kind of gave me the the big, like long armed robot vibes. Um, yeah. I just love nature and there's little birds that land on them and they're all mossy in cool ways. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, Sergio and Sergio's doing uh you know doing art for it and he's he started exploring that and we can't share any of it yet, but um we're excited. We're excited by what he's exploring. So anime says it's a magic version of Scythe. I know it isn't since it's a bag builder. <laughs> yeah, it's not, you know. It it it's honestly probably about that weight of a game where it probably looks more complicated than it actually is, uh, but it's not you know, if you look at the spectrum of our games, getting camera there, where we've got <laughs> Flamebound versus uh, Andromeda's Edge, uh, you know, if this is Andromeda's Edge, you know, it's it's probably in on this mm. side of it, you know. Um, yeah. And Andromeda's Edge seem looks a lot heavier than it is to me. Like there are these yeah. there are these games that I find that the actual mechanics are like, yep, that makes sense. And then it's just all these different cards and all these different factions that you've kind of got to wrap your head around. Um, so so yeah, and I, I've already won once. So really it's not that if I can do it <laughs> with a lot of help from Peter, if I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, should, I mean we pack, this. <laughs> we pack Peter with every game, right? So you know, <laughs> everyone has that opportunity. Tiny little little Peter that <laughs> sends out advice. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Um, I was not, I, I mean, I'm always playing Planecraft, let's be honest. Um, but uh, I was playing Boba Mahjong in a cafe toilet in London. Uh, so I played with a friend over lunch. Uh, it's Boba Mahjong, it's by Tate Wu, and it's a little um, set collecting, crunchy little card game for two players. But yeah, I was in a, a, <laughs> a toilet cafe, as you do. Because that's completely normal. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah, London's quite weird sometimes. I didn't know about it. My friend was like, "Let's go down this creepy dark staircase," and um, yeah, <laughs> went down it. And it was like they still had the urinal backs to the little. You sat down at the urinal, but it was just the top. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> we we actually there wasn't a spare one of those and we sat down on one of the little tables and we're talking like a really small table the kind of games that can fit on it really are very very small <laughs> i think you need um five of them maybe 10 of them for flame craft they were very 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 small um, and they were like oh a f some seats are freed up do you want to go sit in the cool seats pointing out the urinal seats and i was like well we'd have to sit side by side and i find that incredibly strange when talking to someone to sit like side by right. side so, um, uh, so i i didn't but i i got a great it was it was a really fascinating uh place and i had the spiciest chai latte i've ever had in my life and they were like that's what you get in a toilet spice <laughs> I was like, I don't know. wow um, yeah that is know. interesting yeah, it's interesting. Uh, it's it's um, not far from like Soho. If anyone particularly wants to go, uh, it's not far from Soho, and it looks like a staircase down into the abyss. So going into yeah, it. maybe there could be like a theme. You know, like somebody else could open a game store inside of an old sewage treatment plant. Or oh, you know. it started really well, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then it because it, it, it was actually um, Europe's smallest board game shop or, or game shop in Camden at one point, and it was so small it was like a little tiny corner and it sold little like games from like very old all the way to like recent and i got some poker dice from there and i got mr jack pocket which was particularly hard to get a hold of um i think still is um but it's it sadly gone during lockdown it just couldn't survive not having tourists uh and that's its entire but it was it was minuscule like one person would go in and that was kind of it and they were like sorry there's someone in there so you have to look through the window and and, and see and then when they leave you can go wow wow hi. board game brie hi yeah. how you doing? personal experience yeah yeah you've been to london though a couple of times or yeah yeah i've, I've... three times uh i think one the last one was unintentional last year when we <laughs> uh when our flight got delayed and so we spent two days in um oh where is it that uh heathrow actually is there's the Oh, I'm right next to it. It's just a whole area it's, of Heathrow, to be honest. You get trapped in the the tube system there. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a town that starts with an S that sounds. It was it's a Shoreditch? No, it wouldn't be there, would it? No. No. I, anyway, I should know. I really should, but that's it's just the Heathrow area. Oh, Stratford? No. 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 It was it, it was a really dull sounding name, which is what made it. You know, funny. We we should, posted that know. we were vacationing, and I bet Doug's in the other room going, "Who are you anymore?" It's Stansted. Us. There you go, Stansted. Uh, well, Stansted's where have... the other airport is. Isn't it's Stansted it? Airport's not Heathrow. Um, I don't know. All I know is it's a terrible loop. And when I came back from Essen, it took me eight hours to get back, and three hours of that were getting stuck in the tube system, just trying to leave Heathrow. I was like. How do I leave? I get on one bit of the tube, go it. It's like, oh, you can't leave this way. I, I, I just want to leave the airport now. And eventually, just, I saw Costa. Just let me out. <laughs> eventually, I saw Costa, and I was just like, just give me a drink. <laughs> it's like with caffeine. <laughs> um, so yeah. Slough. Slough is what it was. Slough. Oh, Slough is there. Yeah, that is a horrible sounding. Um, horrible yeah. sounding. I've never been to Slough, uh, but I do know someone with that surname uh, who who hates it too. So. <laughs> Yeah, they stuck us in a in a hotel. Uh, well, they stuck us in two hotels. We had to switch halfway in between. But uh, um, and our next flight wasn't going to be for two days, and so we were in Slough. But unfortunately, like we were like, okay, well, I guess we can we can go do some sightseeing. Yeah. But we had to Slough. keep going back to the airport in order to get like yeah new hotel uh uh certificates and and to check on the thing and everything so pretty much the whole day was like taken up by going back and forth also they had lost some of our luggage so i had to check on that um oh i've got it right but here. then well <laughs> yeah in slough what they have is a um the slough uh original 1843 water pump or something like that which nice. is basically just a pipe that sticks up out of the ground. That mm, was like the, that was the highlight. Yeah. 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 So we got a picture with that and shared that with everybody <laughs> on uh, Facebook to say this is what, where we were vacationing. No. Yeah. We've got some weird historical stuff knocking around. We've got like the last lamplight that's powered by the fumes of the sewers or something. Uh, one of those. Is yeah. Around. Um, but yeah, well, that sounds that sounds just like a charming trip yeah. to London. Really, really selling it there. <laughs> yeah. A previous trip, though again with my family this was probably like eight years ago 
um, to relate to your your uh, urinals story was uh, <laughs> my kids were like, I don't know, probably 10 and 12, something like that. And uh, so we went to go use the public toilet. And this one was down underground underneath a, a park. Yeah. And we went down there and then it's like, oh, okay, it's a, it's a turnstile with a pay thing. And so, you know, we're filtering through the coins we've accumulated, uh, you know, trying to figure out, uh, you know, how we get the whatever it was, 25 pence or whatever we need. 20 pence yeah, it's an annoyingly low number. <laughs> yeah, right. And as I'm trying to filter through that and my kids are in front of me at the turnstile, there's a guy right there that goes, no, 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 go under, go under. <laughs> And that just became our, our catchphrase for the next, uh, you know, 10 years did you, after that. Did you go, did you limbo under a turnstile? I, both the kids did. I, I didn't, I didn't have to go. So I also felt, I would have felt a little more uh, conspicuous. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the worst feeling when you're at any of the stations, when you're just ransacking your pockets for pennies going, I desperately need the toilet. Why is this here? Um, but uh, they're, they're slowly improving it, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah. everyone's got a London toilet story it's just a thing what can I say um, <laughs> yeah but um, if you can't check that box off you you, you haven't really visited you know ex exactly um now's the time that we like to do a crowdfunding shout out and because we're not running one right now Brad doesn't have one to talk about <laughs> um, yeah. you just you're just so engrossed in the behind behind the technicalness of uh, backers and sorting things out. Cause that's a lot of what you do at the moment is like um, dealing with things that are need changing or shifting or whatever. Logistics and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I wasn't actually aware other people crowdfund. I thought that was just a thing we did. <laughs> we coined the term, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I have one here called um, Mole Hill Meadows. I have a prototype because uh, I review board games um, and it's a, uh, it's a flip and write about a mole trying to build a tunnel uh, and trying to get the most points doing that. And it's very, very sweet. And I really, really enjoy the arts. One of the things that they did that was really well, really good is the tetrominous or poly. Is it polyominous or tetra? Which one is it <laughs> for like these kind well, of pieces? Yeah, I think for it to be a tetromino, it has to be something with three, right? Right. So is that's it? just a more specific version of polyomino. Poly means four? Well, no. poly means any number, right? Okay. I, well, then it's probably poly, pro probably the first one. Um, but what they've, the artist has done is like create matching art to go with the shapes. Um, so this is my favorite one, which is dabbing, which is amazing. Um, but there's a particularly amusing uh, lineup which is that we find it. Uh, it sounds really cute. It, might, it reminds me of uh, our own bread dragons a little bit. Um, where is it? We just like make that a faster process. There we go. It's got stick, big stick, really big stick. <laughs> nice. Uh, but it's really, really cute. And the illustrations are lovely. And it's by um, Unfringed Games, who did Zuli, which has just been picked up by Oink Games to be turned into a classic one game which is really cool um so yeah definitely worth checking out i think it starts it's crowdfunding on game found on tuesday next week so the 16th um and um yeah it's a little a little british company and i see them at lots of events and stuff and it's just, I think it's just two people as as you know what that's like it's just like two people that can't be done two people can't make a game <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's very common that there's a surprisingly no number of people low number of people in a company for board gaming than people realize. Um, but you know, it's just the, the yeah. way it goes. You're driven by passion and caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but My yeah, check out. I put the link to uh, Molehill Meadows' game found page in the description, so you can check it out. Um, but yeah, it's very 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 sweet. And oh, I have played cool. it, so I can say it's good because I got to play it at Aircon. Um, Right, so as you're here, we don't really get to, uh, we don't talk that much, we do. I run all of your meetings over by like half an hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so much so I put a little star next to my name for the award of talking too much. Uh, <laughs> but if your communication manager did the opposite, 
I think you'd have a problem. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but you've you've designed a bunch of games. Um, that's kind of something that you did before Cardboard Alchemy. Is that correct? Um, yeah. Uh, well, how did you get into? Was it something you did early on designing board games? It's just something you fell into. So, I actually my dad designed board games starting before I was born. That's awesome. I don't actually know what got him to do that because there wasn't really the board gaming scene that there is now. I mean, yeah. we're talking the 60s. Um, and there was actually, there was no well understood path towards doing anything with a board game that you designed, right? Like, yeah. At that time, it would be like, well, I don't know, why don't you go try and talk to Parker Brothers or Milton Bradley or something like that? Yeah. And they wouldn't give you the time of day. So, um, but yeah, he did, he did all sorts of ones when I was a kid of he, one of the ones he did before I was born was a, a bullfighting game. Um, yeah, that one's not coming back. Um, <laughs> age as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but he did once he did a, a, like, it would be whatever he was particularly interested in at the moment. He did one on, uh, being a private pilot and you would actually like, he, he made little balsa wood planes and put them on a stick. And then you would have these little circles that would indicate your uh, altitude that you would put on. And it was probably more of a simulation than it was a game and that you were, you know, uh, it was, it was Microsoft flight simulator before there was, you know, home computers. Um, cool. Yeah. And then he did, he did one that was a, a road rally game where you were driving cars around and trying to hit, uh, you know, you, you'd get clues about points you were supposed to go to on the map. Okay. And then he took he took that exact same map that he made and the same cars, and then he made a cops and robbers game out of it. Um, and did these get printed? The most, like people bought them, or just the games that he made like prototypes of and played with you? He just made prototypes, and we played. And yeah, like I said, there wasn't there wasn't a well understood way of like what would you do with this? Um, yeah. And production uh, 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 quality at that time was like so low. If you went and you bought a game, it was, you know, just numerical chits on a punch out board. And, you know, if you were lucky, a cardboard or, or a, you know, a board uh, to play it on, if it wasn't just like a, yeah. you know, fold out piece of paper. I actually have like an incredibly um, old game from my parents, um, which is called, Multi puzzle, and it's like the original, like fitting every you got to fit all the shapes in, and they can fit in multiple ways. I don't know when it's from, but my dad was like, Do you want this? I mean, it looks old, <laughs> that's cool. But, yeah. yeah, see, we would never let that happen a blank uh, back of the box, like, yeah, yeah, right? Spears Games, uh, and it's even got the address and everything. And it's, it's from 2020. No, <laughs> I don't know when it's yeah. from, um, but yeah, and my dad was like, You should do a video about it. I mean, look at the rules like oh falling apart but yeah like so i was about to say you're like a board game nepo baby but clearly not actually um i, I mean that was certainly where the inspiration came from and you know he and i worked on a couple of things and uh i was younger than you know things came along like uh, dungeons and dragons which you know uh was in incredibly inspiring to me but uh given that it's sort of a creative process it sort of sapped away uh, you know, the board game design attention, I think, because it was like, well, I'm going to design an adventure for my friends to go through. And that kind of fulfilled that need, right? Yeah. And computers came along and focused on that for a long time. And then in the 2000s, I kind of came back. I'd say it was Carcassonne that really sort of like brought me back. Yeah. Um, although it was really, it was a, it was a little bit of a red herring because it, you know, saw Carcassonne. I went, Oh, this is neat. Maybe my wife will like playing this and she's just not really into games. And so it didn't hook her, but it hooked me back in. Um, and then we, let's see, my dad had another design. He still, he still yeah, designs Bree, Bree's games. Lost is your dad still designing games. I remember he had a prototype yep. with him when I saw you both at BGG con five years ago. Um, so. Yeah, he still is working on stuff. He's got um, he's got one that he's we, we have uh, uh, a thing called First Play LA in Los Angeles that mm -hmm. Peter runs. 
Um, and so it's an opportunity for people to just come in and, and have their games play tested uh, or come in and play test other people's games. And so he comes to that fairly often. He's done. He's got one that's uh, Be There Witches, which is, uh, you know, sort of Salem adjacent, uh, Scarlet uh, Scarlet Letter kind of thing where Ooh. people are all trying to, uh, you know, turn each other in and, and you know, uh, save themselves and that kind of thing. Bit well, it sounds a, a little bit like Septima, but probably not as heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 on the lighter side, but it's, yeah, it's... It's very much the like save yourself by implicating someone else kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's really another cool. one's about Pony Express that he's he's been working Sounds on. Sounds prolific, so. and yet he's never had one printed. He has. Okay. He's got one that was made by a very small publisher that was called I think it's called The Spirit of Hawaii. Okay, something to do with Hawaii, and it actually is a. Uh, it goes through three different eras, and it's the history of Hawaii from before uh, uh, it was, uh, what would be the right word? Uh, it wasn't discovered because the people there already knew it was there. Um, before it was uh, visited by the white explorers. Um, <laughs> visited, yeah, that's the word, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so. that's cool. Yeah. So he must be very proud of you for following kind of his footsteps, I guess. <laughs> no, he's actually, he's very mad at me for having gone it now. Yeah, he's, he is. <laughs> uh, Box Meeples uh, ask if you still dabble in video games. I, um, Box Meeples is, by I the way, still... the person who took me to the toilet in, um, in London. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. If it is Julian or Libby, but uh, they're a lovely reviewer couple. Uh, but yeah. He, he he thought that was the place to take me um, because he took Rodney Smith there and thought this is the place to take board gamers clearly. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I all I do is play video games at this point, and I play sporadically. I have been I have been playing Boltro a lot. I don't know if anybody knows that one. Boltro or Voltro? But B I think it's B A L T R O. So not Baldur's Gate. <laughs> no, I did play that last year. Okay. Uh, last year? Earlier this year? It's, yeah, it's Sometime been in the last five year. years. <laughs> Balatro. Ah. Balatro. There you go. There's an extra A in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is kind of like, in my mind, it's sort of like Slay the Spire meets Poker. Interesting. Um, in the, and as you know, there's a Slay the Spire board game. Like yep. I think people started just getting it. So, um, <laughs> um, so yeah. that's really cool. I, I love video games. As as, we, as I showed earlier, I've got a the I've, I've, oh this this was bought for me by my partner after some heavy hinting before he went to the shops. I was like, I think they sell this. <laughs> at, at the, uh, it. It's just in there. Um, but yeah. They have like a clear plastic so that the balloon can float, which is very cool. Anyway, haven't built it yet though. Um, Ooh, Slay the Spire 2. Uh, I haven't heard ten seen that. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, it's, it's always finding time for video games. I, I I don't like film them or anything, I just like playing them. But I always feel yeah. like I should be doing something. My brain can't like just chill. I'm like, oh, I've gotta be doing something productive. <laughs> um, yeah do my best to relax while I enjoy them. But my partner plays video games. He plays, um, he used to play Dota, which I don't know what it means. I, it's death of the ages. I don't know. Um, it could be that. I used to make it up. I used to just come up with different things. That it yeah. meant. Um, and, uh, and then he's been playing like some, where you play different countries and they go to war. It's the, a fun, lighthearted game. Um, Dogs on trains again, I think is what it actually stands for. <laughs> which is the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> um and then yeah we we play Saudi Valley together. He does all the mining and I do all the rearing of chickens and pigs. So it's called Potato Farm because Potato Farm was a complete failure. So and there'll be Got Potato it. Farm. <laughs> well, nice. the third nice. one. It's all about potatoes. As we know at Carbon Alchemy, we do love to uh randomly insert potatoes into our games. Yes, um, the potato Easter egg. <laughs> which is unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> um 
So uh, someone actually asked a question. Um, do you think there'll ever be more Rise of Tribes or something else using the same mechanics? So I have a design that is based off of Rise of Tribes uh, that's a, a post-apocalyptic theme. Um, I had it out. I was playtesting it prior to the pandemic. Um, then we started a publishing company. Mm -hmm. And I keep coming back to it in little bits. The problem is every time I come back to it, enough time has passed that I start to redesign part of it. Um, but I think I've gotten it to where I'm going to, I'm, I'm relatively happy with where it's going. I just need to like finish it to get it back to the table again, uh, before I, I, you know, start pulling pieces off of it again. But, yeah. um, the idea was be it that it's so rise of tribes is, uh, prehistoric, uh, players of prehistoric tribes coming to a new land. Uh, and trying to build up their civilization, but they've got to compete with each other. Yeah. This game, which is tentatively titled Overground, is an apocalypse happened. Uh, people had to go live underground a la Fallout or Silo, but generations, lots and lots of generations have passed. And the people underground don't even know if the idea of the world above is anything more than a myth. And then suddenly the doors open and you go up and you discover this new land, except that it's post-apocalyptic, right? That's it's cool. There's it's a steampunk movie where, where they're like, are. they're living underground. What's the steampunk movie with the living, under, uh, living underground for ages. Um, and then eventually they're supposed to leave because stuff has run out and they think that upstairs is okay, but then they they didn't get the message. Um, mm. It's got like, ah, uh, I can't remember, but it's really good. It's got like steampunk elements and there's a whole like bit. Uh, but yeah, they go up there and they're like, City of Light. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And it's got like a really cool okay. like bit at the end where they're like steampunk, everything locks together in a satisfying way. And it seems fine up there though. So yours doesn't sound as healthy as, uh, it's, as this was. <laughs> well, the doors open because the automated systems thought that it was okay to re to come back to the surface, but there are um, creatures and things oh, no. that are maybe not so safe, and um, and they don't necessarily have all the skills they need to uh, to live on the surface. So, again, it's a civilization building game where you gotta you've gotta you know get these different uh, uh, tools and and abilities and skills and things. Um, so. Yeah, I I love the sound of that. It sounds awesome. Um, my brain is when you see creatures, my brain is thinks of like the time machine, um, the classic one where like the Eloy uh, and the Morlocks. And, yep. but when I studied it at school, and my English teacher, Mr. Worthen, shout out to the coolest English teacher on the planet. Uh, I think he does videos about chess on YouTube. <laughs> um, I think so. Um, and uh, he would say Morlocks and Eloy because the words are meant to sound like they are um right and uh yeah i and we as we've discussed you have a time machine uh this is a common common knowledge um so yeah and i i adore the the original movie so much um so yeah like I, when i think of creatures left you're like oh no it's the morlocks that drag you underground and the eloy they're just innocently playing in a puddle <laughs> yep um, well the thing that i'm trying to get to work in the game is that there's a uh, there's sort of a third act that uh, gives um, a thematic and story element that gets introduced based on what you've done, um, but then also gives you some new goals to shoot for to tie up the end of the game. Uh, but most of my inspirations are like '60s and '70s sci-fi movie things, like uh, like the original Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. Uh, like uh, a boy and his dog, uh, uh, Zardoz, uh, fantastically bad and good movie with um, uh, Sean Connery, uh, where he comes out of a giant floating head and uh, uh, destroys a uh, uh, a perfect society. Um, so just <laughs> yeah, I love it. 
I always I always say it'd be really cool to have like the the movie inspirations like to do like movie nights and stuff. Um the problem is that we um like through our Discord we're all different hours so it would be not really a yep. night as much as it's like a really random time of the day. I think it would be like four in the morning for me. Uh but I still kinda wanna do it. I think it'd be really fun to to watch some of the things that sort of inspired. We watched all of the things that were said to have inspired Stranger Things. Uh, mm. before we like rewatched it because there were just so many uh like horror movie tropes and stuff uh i watched some of them i'm not a horror movie fan doug watched all of them i was okay with missing some let's just say that um but um yeah i, I like seeing what inspires like things you know because uh i think it's really interesting like intertextuality is in everything and it's interesting to see how they connect um yeah so yeah i love that uh how many games do you have in the works like in your head and on paper oh in my head is is a ridiculous number i mean there's ones i, I come back and go like oh, i forgot about that one you know um <laughs> yeah i i've got active notes on another basically card game that uses time as a resource um there's there's one that's much farther out that I can't quite figure out the how to get it to to work that involves like uh, you're the you're the person behind the power uh, in the society or trying to you know there's a world and you're trying to uh, uh, control it but you're the shadow behind the people. Mm -hmm. Like and the so what, what if Marvel series that but well, he doesn't actually have any power, he just watch he's the watcher, he just watches. Right. But yeah. you're you're the you're the secret uh uh you know um power behind the power. Uh so at the beginning of the game, what you do is you pick three decks which represent those three things. So you might pick, you know, uh the the rebel, the um uh the entertainer and uh the merchant or something like that and those decks would give you certain powers and certain scoring abilities on what's going on in this world and every game you could pick three different ones and you're the thing behind those people using them to try and influence the world and so um, you end up with some kind of different sort of society because of the choices that you've made yeah i'm, I'm sensing you're like trying a to make it push it bending thread here in your in your game <laughs> Uh, which is good because my yes. favorite movie is Snowpiercer, so I do enjoy. Um, I actually no, it's it's amazing. I actually couldn't see it in the UK for a long time because it wasn't like advertised. Uh, it was like a whole weird thing where it, something to do with the who bought it. They were like, "Now nah, you can't see it," and so I had to find um, improper ways to find and watch it. And eventually, I have the DVD. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I always thought a cool game would be to try and like build a civilization on a train, and you can only move them like this way or this Absolutely. way and trying to make it so the chain works. So you're like, it needs to start, it needs to run. Like in um, Oh My Goods, if you played that, where the, the chains- Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, as usual with any ideas that we have, we're like, oh, it seems like a lot of work to get this working. <laughs> that, that kind of constraint is is perfect. That, that yeah. like, yes, it's a city builder, but it's linear, right? It's like 18 cards and just like, hard yeah. yeah one train uh there is a tv series about like a infinity train which is amazing uh i didn't enjoy the snowpiercer series as much as the film but i liked that they went with a different story i think it's better to just play around with the concept than try and tell the same story um <laughs> then just take the same thing and multiply it by 10. Yeah. yeah it's it's a it's a fascinating concept i think i think it's i think it's genius and i I, when I saw it, I was just, I mean, I loved the Matrix as a kid. Matrix was my thing. I used to draw like Neo and I want a leather jacket. Uh, and I just really enjoy those kinds of strange movies. <laughs> um, but yeah, engine building. Oh, I clicked ah. on the wrong one. Anyway, engine building where you literally have to make a train engine work. Uh, yeah, a simple train engine. I'm not saying I'm going to make an engine, an actual engine. That sounds hard. But um but yeah um that's so interesting i i every designer i meet has like twenty thousand games in their head all the time uh they have all these like 
half prototype bits and pieces. Um, do you have a, a kit that you like, um, like a designer's kit that's made up of blank dice and blank cards and bits and pieces so you can always give it a go? I, I do, but here's, here's kind of the sad reality. So I've, there's a closet right over there and uh, my wife my wife is a organizer so she takes care of you know keeping me very organized but she's nicely put all of the stuff in uh you know uh in drawers and in various things but now that we've kind of switched to digital especially because we are geographically separated like you work for so long in digital it's easy to update everything and then you can play with some buddy that's in london yeah. or is in houston uh and you really have to make an effort to bring it physical uh, before it gets too late so that you go, oh, right. We actually have to play this on a table and make sure yeah. that it works in the real world. Uh, and you learn a lot that way, but that means that that comes so much later in the process. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I work like, I look with my hands is what I like to do. Um, like to write notes and I have hideous amounts of post-its around here sorry the organization is shocking uh, <laughs> um, but I have like a, a, a we literally have like a vague prototype for a game that we thought up while we were walking the dog called suspiciously long sniffs because you know how a dog you don't know if it's going to eat something we or like you don't know what it's going to do or just sniff right. And you don't want it to eat something or, or do something mischievous, but you do want it to wee. And so the idea was like one person's playing the dog and one person's like deciding to pull them away or not. Uh, but we couldn't like get it to work. We were just like, um, it was literally we've just got the word sniff, but we like the name suspiciously long sniffs. Uh, it's it's good. good. Um, but like, yeah, I, we're always like into small games because when we live in a small flat, you don't really think about big games. <laughs> yeah, you do the name, you print t-shirts, then you worry about the mechanics later. It, it, exactly. That's really where it is. It's just enamel pins and no game. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I can I completely that. sympathize with that or, or, or identify with that theme. Uh, so uh, I don't end up taking ours on walks because we have a big enough yard and they're small enough dogs that they just run around the yard. But, you know, when it's getting close to dark and you want them to, like, hurry up and do their business so you can get back inside and get on with life. That is when, uh, especially our little one, uh, Fergie, decides to uh, catalog every odor that ever existed in the yard in sequential order. And you're like, what difference does it make? You're just going to pee on the spot. Why does it have to smell a certain way? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's it's just delightful. It's I think one of the things that um, tends to do well in in content and and in board games and movies is something that people can relate to that lots of people experience so i think as a, a dog dog owners we appreciate the the uh, the uh, and schrodinger's cat of what will they do <laughs> who knows what what's coming right. next do i do i do i tempt <laughs> this moment and let them continue sniffing or are they gonna eat something and i'm gonna have three days of absolute hell uh which happens annoyingly uh often with a, a jack russell um they just mm. love eating everything and they never know when they're going to get that he's a rescue so he never knows when he's going to get food he'll eat a rock before he thinks he's going to get dinner um but yeah um so yeah what what current things um have you been doing this week like at carbon alchemy what what sort of things that maybe people don't know that uh you do it could be banal i know that some of the things that you do you might you might find truly fascinating um but it's things that we need to do and they're really important yep. so what's kind of your week look like so like that you've had uh so what typically falls on my plate are uh so anything accounting and we went through uh tax season uh here in the us so uh but there's also just quarterly stuff that has to happen with like reporting that and reporting sales tax which is um, why your dragon is uh, has a huge chest of gold just yep um the um oh what's his name that I can't remember it. Like the, the I was thinking of the Christmas Carol dude. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I can't remember his name. Ebenezer uh, Scrooge. There we go. This the 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 Scrooge yeah. dragon that's like no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's such a great dragon. It's such a big design as well. And it's like we're trying to put it in things. We're like, oh, Brad's the dragon. <laughs> 
Yeah, I gotta have my prop. Um, Good to have your prop, yeah. And then logistics and fulfillment are another one. So uh, we don't have a warehouse. We use other people for warehouses. Uh, we have four of them that we work with for uh, the in the U.S., uh, England, um, China, and Australia. Um, so when we're fulfilling a campaign, we fulfill out of those. For our store where we sell stuff online, uh, we just fulfill out of our uh, US and uh, UK one. Um, so there's, yeah, there's ongoing stuff with that of making sure we've got inventory, making sure uh, things are going out. Uh, fortunately, the people we work with are very, uh, do their job great. So it's, you know, for the most part, it's orders just flow to them and things go out and, and folks get their stuff. Um, what else is happening this, this week, a, a big push. So we've got this situation where uh, Peter has been in Asia uh, coming back on Sunday, but then uh, Chris Strain, who's one of our, our uh, developers here and uh, helping to get games made, and I are then both going on vacation for a few days afterwards. So we're trying to get all sorts of work done for Critter Kitchen and then hand it back off to Peter so that it can just get like, uh, sent off to the manufacturer. So a big thing this week is just getting the rule book uh, polished and ready to go. Yes. Um, but Chris is also working on getting just all of the the printed assets, you know, tied up and ready. And, and, and like the, I think uh, Lauren's been working on the recipe cards and fitting yep. them on and <laughs> all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh it's such an interesting thing to see because I I saw like the end of Andromeda's Edge and I'll this seems to have gone like way quicker, but I guess because it's like a, a smaller game, <laughs> it's a little bit less. Um yeah. Yeah Andromeda's Edge was was just big and it becomes exponential, right? So if a game has a hundred cards instead of fifty cards. It's more than double the work because you've got to check every card against every other card to make sure that you've covered all of the ways that things can work together and that you've that yeah. you've made the phrasing all the same, right? Yeah, absolutely. And like you've you've chosen to spell something one way, so you're like this is this is how this is going to be. So we've got to make sure this. And I think I remember when I was doing some checking for the Andromeda's Edge rulebook, we decided what things would be capitalized and what wouldn't, and then going and checking those um but yeah it's it's really interesting you're, you're, it's not just making a game it's making a novel <laughs> Same yeah time. especially with the yeah. amount of role books in and drum edge <laughs> well and the thing that gets me and we were talking about this this week is most people who play your game will not have read the rule book yeah because one person does and, and sometimes that person doesn't even, right? That person got taught. They went to a convention, mm. they played the game. Somebody else taught it to them. They went, this game's great. They bought it. And then they go teach it to everyone else. And they go, well, I already know how to play. I don't need to read the rule book. Or like me, they can't read. And they just see things that aren't there. And they're <laughs> like, I played Scout wrong for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. Someone corrected me on a video. And I went, oh, you're correct. Yes. Well done for spotting that. <laughs> what? I was testing you. Yeah. Mind blown. <laughs> what? Okay, so what? What did you do wrong in Scout? So I thought it was always numbers going up, so a two three could be a two two, but it's not. Two twos will always be, um, like double digits will always be a, a number that size. You have to go up in like three cards. So, got it. Yeah. Okay. I, I just thought it was logical. I was like, yeah, and yeah. then a twelve. Beats an 11, you know? Uh, communications manager cannot read. <laughs> that's, that's the ticket. Um, and a lot of times I have to spell communications as well. It's just a... It's, <laughs> um, luckily, yeah. I don't have to read uh, rule books all the time. Uh, I have a partner who's very good at learning games. I utilize his skills all the time. Um, that's why uh, a lot of times I've invited him in on we're playing Andromeda's Edge with Peter. Do you want to come in so that you can remember everything too? Um, like oh uh so we've got some questions but yes please do bring some questions in um ask questions bring some questions in what does that mean ask some questions um this is probably like the last time you'll see brad ever again so you might as well 
I got to go back into the uh, into the dungeon after this. Into the dungeon, yeah. Into the digital realm. Um, Boxed Meeples asked, have you thought of a digital rule book like Dized? Yeah. The, the rule book. Okay. So rule books are awful. <laughs> um, as I said, chances are the the majority of people who ever play your game aren't reading it. Um, but they are necessary and they have to meet that lowest common denominator of somebody buys the game from a store, has never heard of it before. They need to be able to open the rule book and understand how to play the game. So no matter what, you still have to put in that effort to have a, a rule book that comes with the game that is understandable. It's great to have digital versions with like a QR code or something that you can go and get, but like you can't guarantee that someone's going to have access to the internet or whatever when they play the game. So our feelings, you still got it. You still got to give them something physical so that they can play the game that you've sold them. Um, but then the other thing you've got to look at is the other way a rule book gets used is for reference, right? Like everybody knows how to play the game, except I think this card works that way and you think it works that way. And we're going to go look in the rule book and try and find that. And of course, how you would lay out all of the information if I was teaching you to play the game and how I would lay it out if I if was just wanting you to find that one rule about what we do in this phase and this step and whether or not this means all of them or only the ones that you have in your hand or whatever is different. And somehow you've got to make something that solved both of those um, yeah, I think situations. I think small, quicker games work quite well with these sort of automated. Don't bother reading the rules. Play it as you play as you go. Like quicker, shorter games with not as much stuff going on. Um, but you're also relying on a sort of third party to make sure those things are correct, and that could probably be cause more problems than like if you're like, oh, you need to make sure that you know what this is, and if we have all the power over the answers, then we make sure everything's sort of correct. Uh, it's one of yeah. the things, but yeah, it's it's also Andromeda's Edge is huge. I cannot imagine someone going, let's not read the rule book. <laughs> let's just open this app yeah. and it'll just slowly talk us through what to do. I, that sort of terrifies me. Um, so yeah, but I like videos. I think I think it's nice when you you can research it beforehand and watch people talk through it in different ways. There's different kinds of ways to learn a game, and the one I enjoy is watching a video or. You know, I'll do like a half playthrough to learn it and then I'll start again sometimes just to kind of pick it up. Um, but yeah, like, you know, there's, that's why Rodney Smith's so popular with his, his videos on how to teach them and everything. Um, yeah. But yeah. It's, and we've uh, been fortunate to have, you know, a number of people make uh, tutorial first play kind of videos for our games. We've had some really good ones. And I, you know, one I always shout out is, uh, Board game tutorials? Not, board game tutorials that did for uh, uh, Flamecraft, where it's all animated with little voices and everything. And like, yeah, if you can make it entertaining while you do it, that's just, that's gold. And then he did it yeah. for Critter Kitchen. Um, we sent him a, a, a yep. prototype. And he did a really, really good job. And he's got such a fun sense of humor. Uh, I would yep. say that his name is the hardest to find because it's like a search. You're just searching board game tutorials. Um, but he's he's really really cool, and he's got this amazing sense of humor that mm. makes it fun to watch. Like stop motion, it, it is stop motion, but it's got like the humor yep. of stop motion as well. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend checking out his stuff. Uh, but we've got loads of different ones that people have made, and I think we're planning on also doing some shorter videos covering the different factions that are in Andromeda's Edge, absolutely, so that you can look up a different faction like and go, oh, maybe I want to try these ones out. Um, and we can give a bit more info there because as much as we want to add in the rule books, we really have a certain weight to get to with the game. Right. So certain level of pages so we can add more into video content as well to get discussions going because there's so many variables to what you can do in Andromeda's Edge. It's going to be yeah. it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see people working out their favorite factions and who versus who. It's it going to be awesome. Um, it is a deep pool to swim in. Yeah. <laughs> What did you call it? A black hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. uh, board game Brie asks, I, I mean, I, I want to say I don't know the answer to this one. Uh, how are you handling European and ROW fulfillment? Do you have a warehouse in Europe? Yeah, we're doing that from the UK. We, we use uh, Spiral Galaxy to do that. Yeah, so we've been 
partnered with them for a long time. They're really great to work with. They are awesome. They're very fast. When we were doing the um, the merch for Flamecraft at the end of the year, the speed at which, oh my goodness, I was just amazed. Yeah. Um, talking of Flamecraft, someone did ask, uh, is it possible to buy a second copy of the fancies or shops used in solo so you could have a separate deck and I don't have to rebuild each time I play multiplayer with the family? I have two copies uh. of the game for this reason because I, <laughs> I'm so like, because if you're working on the achievements, you don't want to, you know, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't really have a good way of selling pieces like that. Um, I will take that note and I will think about it. <laughs> um, Box Meeples, which is the best starting faction? I'll need all the help I can get to beat Libby with her extensive dwellings experience. Um, I really like the because Box Meeples are getting the um fancy all in, so they will get the flame craft flame keepers, and they're really good because they're quite they're quite simple in terms of. You know, I won with just getting a load of money. That was great. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also you don't have to fight as much as well because what the plushy prize does is it kind of I'm too cute, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, that's a good one. What what would you recommend for like beginners or at least like I want to destroy my wife? It sounds like uh, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I one of the the I think it's the refugees where you. Um, you basically get rewarded for losing battles, I believe. Is that the uh, one that Lauren played where it was really annoying? No, that was damage. That was the blobs. That was the damage one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's maybe a little trickier because you've got to manage, uh, you know, enough damage, but not too much. And I think, but I think it's the Pulse War Refugees. Okay. I've been on Credit Kitchen for so long that I'm pretty sure it I got that right. Be. Well, by the time you play it with her, she'll be your wife. So that's why I said it. <laughs> She's currently on her hen do, so I hope she has a lovely time. Um, uh, I have to say, you should all be diplomats, no matter how crazy a client's request is. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's not a fighting game, though. You wouldn't call it like a fighting game. It's about, it's about the cones. No, it's about the <laughs> putting down your buildings, basically. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah, that's the thing, I, even going back to it's not as difficult or it's not as imposing as you might think. It's really about just putting something down or bringing something back and then a whole bunch of like options layered on top of that. But yeah, yeah, I four, think four the, engines running at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, lo I love that because I love engine building games and the fact that you can kind of choose which one that you want to really build on or kind of all of them. Uh, you've kind of got like a few different ways to work with when you're doing most engine building games are like one engine. Like right. this one's got like different ways that each one works, which is really cool. Yep. Um, but um, yeah, um, well, we're, we're nearly at the end of our time um, until Brad scurries away into his treasure box and uh, just sort of counts his, counts his gold, <laughs> gold coins. As Too a nice reminder, <laughs> speaking, oh yeah, well, I do enjoy Scrooge McDuck. I think he's David Tennant's voice now, so it couldn't be more perfect. Uh, we do have shiny gold coins uh, in our in our shops. Remember, I actually yep. just have these by my desk as a fidget gadget now because they're so satisfying. They, they, yeah, they feel so good. I know, and I just like stacking them up um, as like a little fun dexterity game of like when will it fall? Um, but yeah, such a good sound. And also, I've been doing some uh, videos which are on Instagram and TikTok uh, painting the minis. So I'm at uh, two and a half That's now. So we, have, we have to finish Mulch, who is getting there, but needs some needs the snail needs some color. Um, and uh, I've got I've got more paint, so um, but I'm glad people are enjoying them. <laughs> Be careful! I have two by my desk, and they quickly turn black. What? What what are you doing with your coins? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's very strange. I mean, so far there are no there are no discolorations for me. Um, but uh, but yeah, or just sort of like hold it like a little threatening pile of money in your pocket, you know? Yeah. 
I love that. Uh, and then there's also the resources, but they're in my box. I don't have them out right now, obviously. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, next week we will have, I assume Peter will be back. Uh, back uh, on the... There, yeah, is, the, there is a minute chance that he will get ill because whenever you go away, <laughs> he'll suddenly have some horrific cold. Well, then he'll just do a video where you'll only, you'll only see him down like <laughs> Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's done live streams with a cold as well. It's happened before. Um, where are you off to on your vacation? Or is it? Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's just a like getaway and go do some, you know, wandering around and eating food. And Are you a big fan of Mexican food? It's not, is it all Mexican? My geography is terrible. So I'm just realizing that New Mexico might not be. <laughs> New Mexico is adjacent to Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, like some of the things we saw uh, advertising, like, well, make sure you get some of the New Mexican food. And you look at the restaurant and it's like, okay, it's it's the same Mexican food we have in California. Um, but sure, I like it. So that's not a problem. Yeah. I'm rubbish with spicy food. Um, so I like, I like my pickled food, big fan of like German cuisine, obviously a little bit of sauerkraut and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I'm getting That's better, better with you. curries, but there's something about like very spicy food that I just can't taste anything and it just hurts. I'm never doing the hot ones challenge. I don't think I'll ever be famous enough to be asked to do the hot ones challenge. <laughs> um, but I would still say no. Uh, <laughs> Would you do it? Have you would, got the? Would you do the chicken wing I'm, hot ones challenge? I'm probably uh, I'm about middling in in my capacity. Like I I'm okay with hot food. I don't seek out things that are like, you know, what I really want is my scalp to sweat. That's not what I'm going <laughs> for in you know eating. But I think I could probably withstand the challenge i might not be happy for the rest of the day i have a, i have a friend that likes to cry uh she will add hot sauce to hot food um she's like half thai and she's like it's not good yeah. if it's not making you cry like a happy tear um and i'm like i don't like it's only making me cry if it's so good like you know like it's such a good roast chicken <laughs> yeah i think <laughs> I think if you've grown up with that heat level, you know, from birth, like your tongue doesn't yeah. even activate unless some of that's there. So you're just, you're just not going to taste anything. Right. Yeah. And my my dad's up. like ruined his by just having loads of condiments around him, like a little shield of condiments around him while he eats. And mom doesn't even like bother seasoning it sometimes. So I grew up on like unseasoned food because my dad would just add so much and so when I met Doug he did me like a steak and chips and I was like this is amazing and he's like salt <laughs> like, and I'm like yeah this is amazing I've, I don't even need to add ketchup and he's like don't add ketchup to your steak <laughs> I now do because I'm you know we've been together long enough I can do that you, um, <laughs> yes um well yes uh everyone uh thank you so much for joining us um uh check out the mole hill meadows and also if you if you haven't late pledged for critic kitchen it's it's open there's a link below or at least if i'm good at my job it is definitely below and it will be in five minutes um and uh yeah it's um the last chance to get the deluxest of of critters and kitchens and it's it's going to be so beautiful we're just most of the time just sit there on our group messaging going pretty <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> it's so pretty um so we're really excited to get that to your tables and uh, yeah peter will be back next week and he can i think yep. he'll be spending most of it showing you all of the photos and all the things he saw over three weeks oh, amazing things yep we might have to do a two-hour one i don't know it's a lot of stuff <laughs> um two-parter yeah. or something yeah it's a big one um but yeah thanks so much everyone and uh have a fantastic weekend and